starting at the front, um, best place to start, the grill. Um, we are really, we have a phrase internally which is romantic but never retro. And what that really means is we went and looked at the great cars we've done in the past, DB24, DB5, and we really looked at, we call this the S-curve or moustache line. And if you go back in the old days, this was very, very strong, really, really strong. And those features used to make the body. And we sort of felt like that had been lost in a lot of modern car design and we wanted the grille to really form the shapes around it. So you can see how sculpted we are all the way around the car. The grille floats. There is a lower aperture, but you don't really read it. You only read the upper aperture. So all those forms flow straight down the car and into this big clamshell. The clamshell was a, a real moment in the project. It, was, uh, it enabled a lot of things in terms of pedestrian impact, but also design. And uh, for Aston Martin Design, we want to make cars that are closer to art as we can in an industrial context. If you see this car next to a DB9, it has the sort of same effect of when you saw a DB9 part the first time next to a DB7. It's that step change, very progressive in its language. On the side of the car then, um, the car has very, very integrated aerodynamics uh, on it. It's not a case of sticky plasters like we'd see, say, five, ten years ago. It's a full system. So starting with the side straight, which is very much reimagined for this car, it was sort of inspired by what we did for CC100. So the side straight's actually meeting the wheel arts, and the reason why it's doing that is we're actually venting air off the top of the, uh, off the, top of the arch, pressure off there. So that increases downforce at the front, reduces drag, Underneath here, you actually have a series of ribs, of small features under there. And what's that all doing is, is spiraling the air down the side of the car, scrolls the air down the side of the car, and it pulls air off the bonnet, down the side, and under the wing mirror. That reduces drag, it reduces wind noise, and it's all leading to the system, the aero system at the back of the car. This was inspired by F-duct in Formula One, which is insp itself inspired by 1950s biplanes, blown wings. So the air comes through here, through a tunnel, and creates a blade of air at the back of the car. Now that, the real reason of doing that is we wanted this super clean silhouette on the back. Again, go back to the GT cars, the greats of 50s, 40s, 70s. They had these really, really clean lines. The reason why that's changed is aerodynamics, high-speed requirements, and we wanted to find a solution to that that was unique, innovative, and we actually have two patents on this system. Um, it produces lots and lots of high-speed stability, and it does that with almost no drag penalty whatsoever, so very, very clever system, hence the, hence the patent. In terms of overall proportion of the car, we've tried to, with DB9, we have a wonderful starting point but we've tried to amplify wherever possible so the front wheel versus db9 is now 65 millimeters further forward meaning we can get the a pillar shooting straight through the center of the front wheel overhangs front overhangs slightly shorter rear overhangs about the same the overall dimensions of the car are very very similar to today we have some very much more crisper lines on the car. We call them very consequential. So everything here, so this line, this line refers to the aero beneath it, the width of the tire beneath that. So they are stronger, more assertive lines, but very consequential in nature. We have more sculpting down the body side, more cigar, as we call it, through the here, and more bottle through the length of the car. We actually call this the roof strake. So we have side strakes on our car, bonnet strakes, and now we have roof strakes. Um, the thinking behind this was, again, this marks the change. It's a very progressive uh, feature for Aston Martin. We have a wonderful 103 year history, but we shouldn't let that hold us back and move forward. So you can either do it in black, as you see here, with a black roof, which separates the upper body to the lower body, or with the car we have over here, we have a bright aluminium anodized uh, roof, roof strake. So here you highlight the cabin, here you separate the cabin, and you can also do it in body colour, and by doing that you join up. So a very diverse range of the way you can spec the character of the car. You'll see some elements in here from CC100, DBX and Vulcan. Those cars in many ways were test beds for our future design language. They were our little movie trailers, but like all good movie trailers, they don't give the final story away, which is this car right now. So elements like this with the, with the, uh, the straight running straight off the wheel, you get all this power grip round the wheel, and you'll notice the wheel, the, the lines actually point forward, so everything's gripping around the front tire. So this was from CC100. 
These elements were developed from GP100, the car we did for Gran Turismo. Uh, DBX also featured this thing. And as I said, this was something that we were developing and testing as we went along. On the rear of the car, we also have what we uh, internally call the, the discus section through here. And you saw this very much on, in a very exaggerated form on Vulcan. So you have a discus section through the Y0 and this very clean line all the way through to the lamps at the edges. You can see the grill is set back slightly than before. This point is very far leading forward and this is all tucked under, giving this very, very sharp nose appearance. It's something that you sort of saw back in older Astons, older cars, and it's very, very hard to achieve now. This was a big hand-in-hand -hand operation with engineering to make sure that we could do this and pass all our crash regs. Well, it's an all-new car, so it's the it's a significant move from DB9, all-new package, all-new body and Y, all-new engineering, all-new infotainment, uh, all-new cabin space, which is very important to a GT car. Yes, we've tested public opinion with some of our detailing on the inside and the outside of the car and you can see the result of that craft now on the inside of DB11. In terms of themes, materials have always been really important to Aston Martin. Again you can see that last year's show stand very important for materials with the DBX and the combination of materials is important because where, it's where a craftsman can really show uh, his worth, his experience by understanding the materials, how to combine them. So we get to show off and what you're seeing here is our best crafted uh, product, uh, core of the brand, the GT, DB9 replacement, DB11. Again, our knowledge of materials, placement of the materials, leather on the seats, very good material, it's a high quality leather. Um, the pattern of the perf and the placement of the perf uh, not only sort of deliver a, a crafted emotional aspect of the car, they give you a functional aspect, so it delivers the heat and the cool, uh, the pull down of temperature through those areas as well. And it's a fanning design, uh, it, it mimics the torso, where the pressure points are on the body. Uh, it's more embellishment on the headliner, I think. So you're pulling certain areas together to get that cohesiveness in the story, and you can see it on the rear seats as well. The Brogue is pure craft. That's to show the levels of detailing, hand-built uh, uh, crafting that we can do. Well, you imagine a, a true GT car, which is, as I say, is the core, the backbone of Aston Martin. It's about a shared experience. Uh, so you're not, you're not, as with other cars maybe, uh, you might have a more driver focused uh, geometry and controls uh, centred around the steering wheel in a different way. But because it's a shared experience, transcontinental driving, long journeys, in comfort, uh, it, it gives you a certain sort of layout. Uh, everything is to reach, to touch, uh, it's intuitive. Uh, we've got the LCD screen there in front of you and, and the sat nav screen. And there's a lot of information now through the infotainment that you get directly in front of you. So duplicated here for the passenger, again, shared experience. Uh, so it's about that sporting comfort. It's something that's true, it's core to the DNA at Aston Martin, sporting comfort, sporting luxury. So in here, you've got some very classical elements and you've got a lovely open pour veneer here. Uh, and that's a very sort of contemporary feel. And in terms of the placement, it's very different to DB9 as well. Because if you remember the waterfall, We've still got that geometry and that flow through the car, but the placement is as if it was a piece of furniture. So it's not on top, it's not applied, it's holding up the sides. Same on the door, it's a very large piece of wood, that very formed piece of wood, like a piece of furniture. So it's making it more contemporary while remaining sporty and automotive. In, in moving forward, we have to look backwards uh, and, and recognise the heritage, the values, what we've done before. So DB9, fantastic car. Uh, it's because it's so timeless and beautiful that it's lasted so well. And it, it's gonna be the same with this car as well. We've got those DNA elements. We've got a flowing line, four to aft through the center of the car. So that it's further forwards now. So you've got more space. Uh, we've been very conscious of that in the package development to make sure we're giving more, more space to the occupant and more comfort, more perceived space. The dashboard is further away and the range of movement on the seat is, is way better than we've ever had before. So for really tall people or, or fifth percentile females, they can move high and forwards. You know, it really opens up the, the, the spectrum to, to who will buy this car. Uh, and with a range of colour and material specs we've got, you can really make it very feminine. The forms are quite flowing and soft. 
um, but you get a little bit more of that aggression in the proportion and the stance on the outside, so we've got a good balance between inside and outside on the car. And package, you know, the engineers have done an amazing job on this. I mean, they created a few problems for us. Uh, for instance, in the centre console, there's so much space in the centre console, uh, you know, hinging the lid at the rear would make it so awkward because the lid was so long, the depth of the, uh, the storage in that area. So we decided to power it so we get this elegant movement fore to aft that gives you the cup holders or the full range of movement to reveal a uh, glove box there. Just going to the steering wheel, very important touch point on the steering wheel. We've got some rotaries, some interface buttons here. Sport, you can change the character of the car again with sport and damper set, uh, functions and all of that gets fed back, the different states of the car gets fed back through the cluster there. Again, paddles mounted on the column, lovely metal parts, nice weighted feel, all the touch points are just right. Same with the door release, and you've got these lovely crafted elements really close to you, you can feel and touch the raised welt there. So it's all about craft in front of your eyes and feel. In terms of the interface, what you see, graphics, all new, uh, the sonic branding, the sounds, it's all new to Aston Martin, but you've got some familiarity through the capacitive switch packs here uh, as we experimented with on Aston Martin uh, Vanquish. So that was the first time in the industry that you saw that and it's repeated here. But again, back to jewellery, you've got these physical elements, metal, touch, warm, cold, and you get that sort of reward, that, you know, reward for the soul if you like. Familiar PRND, again, part of the DNA, true to, to, uh, to the GT cars, it's right to keep that for this car. We have a variety of designer specs created. Uh, the way they came about was we have so many options with our materials and, uh, and a variety of different things that we have at Aston Martin. We decided to create these designer specs to help give a, an easier look, almost a menu of how uh, you could pick and outfit your entire car. Uh, think of this environment as a fine restaurant, and if you wanted to order from the menu, we have some great selections, but you can also order off the menu if you choose. So what we're looking at is our spec wall. As you can see, there are our, our selection of leathers in a variety of different grades, as well as our exterior colors. We have our materials for our veneers, for the interior door surfaces, as well as a variety of metals and finishes for our jewelry packs. What the purpose of this wall is to show our customers the variety of choices they have, and then we can help specify an interior or an exterior for the customer to really make it their own. Some of the influences for some of the exterior colors are uh, really motivated by a variety of trends that are happening. We're seeing a lot of silvers that are warming into the brown areas, so a lot of our metallic finishes are following those trends. Uh, when we see the leathers, you see a variety of metallic influences. So you have a basic leather, but it has a nice sheen to it that really showcases off that leather as it wraps over a surface. Uh, as we move into some of the veneers that we have, we have a lot of new open pour woods, a lot of different wood technologies, and uh, taking carbon in new, new avenues as well to bring it back, along with traditional piano black, high gloss, and uh, a few other influences. But some of the most interesting elements that we have on DB11 are some of the handcrafted elements that really make this car crafted. Uh, you can see some of the features that we have with, with the broguing influence, and you can get that in a variety of locations in the car. We also have the logo embossing, uh, and then that goes along in conjunction with the quilting and the perfing that we have on the seating surfaces, as well as the headliner. Moving into Intrepid Sport, that's definitely uh, on the side of the sporty feel, where we have the punchy color in the cinnabar orange with the black accents that really enhances the element of contrast from that bright, bold color to the gloss black uh, trim elements to including the uh, chopped carbon interior bits. It really brings out the sporty flavor of this particular look. And then moving into what we consider our boldest look, the Shanghai Fashionista, really tapping into more of the fashion element, the, ch the, the boldest trend as we look forward. It's a duotone interior with the duotone seats, so you have that light and dark, but you also have that color pop poking through the brogue as well as the stitch. And then we bring into the frosted glass blue paint, which is a very special paint that has glass flake floating in the clear coat so that under direct sunlight you see a variety of big bold sparkle. So it's a very bold look. 
and bringing in as well as uh, some of the elements of the chop carbon and the black cant rail to give you that almost duotone look from the exterior of the car that matches the duotone of the interior of the car. It's a nice layering effect because that adds to kind of like the onion story. All those layers come together and it adds to one bigger, more developed picture. And our, our uh, interiors are all about adding more and more and more, but tastefully as well, just giving them the customer what they want and giving them all the elements that they can have. Iconic Craft, again, similar to the new Heritage, it is definitely more of a heritage play. It is something that uh, is more of a classic look to an Aston, but we have some of those new features. We have the perf, we have the quilt, and we also have the brogue. Downplayed it, it's not as much contrast as we played over in some of the other specs. But again, it's a, a new take of a classic saddle look with a magnetic exterior. And then bringing in a little bit of what we, the lace wood, the veneer, that is a, uh, a very unique wood that has a very unique appearance to it and adds a lot of element uh, and also that handcrafted natural element to the interior of the DB11. These particular specs were kind of created by personal favorites of the design team and we have a variety of different people that are on the team, male and female. So it was when you look at these specs, it's across the board. Um, as far as our customers go, we have women that really like masculine appealing cars and we have also the opposite. So it really depends on making the car your own uh, and we have so many options that no matter what the customer wants, they have the ability to do that. Consider these ideas to be just a hint at what is possible. We have so many options. We have a variety of different looks. It's really up to the customer. There's really no limitation. And if you choose to say something that wasn't on our spec wall, we do have the Q option where Q can create anything you want.